Come one, come all to the Midsummer Carnival. Again. It's year two for this joyful summer event, folks, and this time around, it has brought three brand new games, over a dozen unique decorations, and even a small batch of fresh mechanics. So let's get to it. After we reintroduce ourselves, the good old Corvus Goodfeather, that is, our new friend here will spawn and be at the portal as the event begins, and will be offering the Con If All Sapling to help kick off the festivities. So buy it when you can, and you'll then have have access to six mini games, a prize booth, and more for additional golden seeds. In fact, we'll be needing lots of both from here on out, so get to collecting. But word of advice, place that sapling down wherever you please, ring the tree, and both Corvus Goodfeather himself and a crow kid will swoop down to join you and then proceed to stay in this area instead of where they were. And oh yeah, more on these crow kids in a bit. Because for now, we've got some new games to play, of course. Like the Nest Defender here. Purchase the kit, place it wherever. However, I do implore you keep all games nearby. Socket a token, and get the shooting. No. Seriously, we have got ourselves a shooting range with a bit of target practice and don't stop together now, everyone, as we look to eliminate evil bugs while ignoring the innocent birds by pressing the button behind the game and aiming true throughout it. Do good by how many you take out, as well as how quickly you do so, and more tickets will be yours, especially if Corvus and any of the Crow Kids happen to be spectating you. But next up, the Birdhouse Ball Drop minigame. Now this one's a bit different compared to the rest, as we don't really have much input this time around. Really, the only thing we can somewhat control is where our ball actually drops from if we time things correctly. But even still, it appears as if every drop is kinda random when it comes to how it bounces around in there, and that's the key. The bounces. In my short time and experience with this game, it seems like all that truly matters is how many bounces we get before reaching the bottom. However, all that said, landing in the nest is still preferable to any of the sides, especially if you bounce a lot. But have fun. And the final game of the day, the Cuckoo Spin Wheel. Also one that is somewhat out of our hands, actually. The game looks to have us try and match our inner beak to the outer pointer for far more tickets if we happen to land on better spaces double, if you know what I mean. Thing is, though, I never matched anything and still won quite a bit, so there's that. Obviously, lucky spins are probably gonna earn us more tickets, but with how often we can actually spam these last two games, the best one-time results might not always matter. But hold up, Beard, how do we even get the chance to spam any of these games? Well, tokens of course, of which either cost seeds or gold, just depending on how many you want at once from Corvus. But hold up times two, Beard. Why are we even playing these games? What are tickets even used for? Well, the prize booth, of course, of which has 18 plus foods, clothing items even, decorations, and more for our desire throughout the event. And we will start with what wasn't here last year. The Mini Tower Drop Egg Ride and the Light Catcher Kits. Both of which I believe to be purely decorative, however I'm not 100% sure about the latter in that regard. And yes, the former is interactable by both us and Crow Kid. To continue though, while Midsummer Nightlights are not new this year, Clay did add three new designs for them, so there you go. Once more, these are also interactable by most parties and do count as decorations if placed within a Carnival Tree's radius. Just mind that they do not last forever though and will need to be reactivated very often. And already the last new prize booth item of the day, you ask? The gold mystery box. Buy some, place some, and enjoy 12 new mini statues resembling crows, the mini games themselves, the decor all around you, and plenty more, all while adding to a tree's decor to boot. And yes, the more you decorate within a tree's radius, the fancier the tree will get. And the fancier a tree gets, the more crow kids will actually spawn in. 
Up to four, my memory serves, but correct me if I'm wrong. But speaking of crow kids, while crow kids will still just kind of hop around, interact with decorations, yap a lot, and give extra tickets if they're spectating you, we can now also feed them midsummer corn and other treats once every eight days for additional tickets and tokens. It's good stuff. But holy crap, that is a long cooldown timer for an event that's usually just trying to get us to have as much fun as soon as possible. But the absolutely very last new thing this year, at least as far as I can tell, is how Crow Kids will also now sleep, sit, and tell stories near campfires, folks. So enjoy it all. Oh, but we can't really wrap up the event without actually discussing what has returned, of course. Not when this could be someone's very first midsummer carnival at the end of the day but popcorn is still a prize if we do so choose to spend 12 tickets for three bites of the stuff seed clusters are still a thing too however do note that the only seeds that are clustered in these packets are corn seeds and nothing else corny slush rushes back to our inventories this year and can also be served to crow kids it seems however again there is an eight day cooldown to any crow kid having a treat chirpy scarves are still available for 24 tickets and will provide some summer insulation, offer a decently negative sanity drain when I could have sworn last year it was a positive one, last for five days and be resolable if and when needed. Both the green chirpy cloak and yellow chirpy capolette still remain and both will provide even more summer insulation, offer that very same and potentially new minus 4.4 sanity per minute drain and last for five days once more. They're all not terrible, but I do believe all three have been nerfed this year. Mystery boxes have not though, however they never really had anything to do with apart from more decorations. They will break open into more statue types like the golden boxes, but said statues are just going to be the very same as the last year's ones, mind you. Same themes though if you catch my drift. All the decorative and interactable kits also return, all at varying costs up to nearly 40 tickets a pop, mind you, and from the confetti cannons, mini ferris wheels, pendulum and more, we really have a lot of decorative possibilities with this new event, so enjoy them all. And lastly, the three returning mini-games, Eggs in a Basket, Hubbub for Grub, and Egg Scramble. Hubbub for Grub has us feeding crow chicks worms as quickly as we can for more and more tickets. Eggs in a Basket is a half-speed, half-memory game where we need to memorize where the starred eggs pop up in order to, hopefully, rapidly progress towards matching more starred eggs, of course. And Egg Scramble sees us running around like crazy trying to push as many runaway eggs back to the very center of the game itself. Self. And here's a tip for this last one. Build walls. Have fun. Oh, but before we go, one last note. Don't forget about the crow kid in the trade-in within the curio cabinet, as clicking on it will lead you to this minigame here that will have us collecting trash from a maze for unique and quote-unquote hidden profile icons. It's good stuff. And there you have it, everyone. The second annual Midsummer Carnival event for Don't Starve Together. With three new games, a crap ton of new prizes, and and just some bonus fun along the way, the event itself is definitely shaping up to be a great one to wait for year after year. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the games. Bye-bye.